Welcome back, Circuit fans, to the February 2019 2 Tournament. We are on to round three. Round two has led to, well, led to this, because that's how numbers work. But yeah, apart from the match we watched, Dying Frank Sparkles beat Malric and Pet Turtle, and 400 Mana 12 beat Top Cac and North Chilean G. So now we're going to be watching Dying Friend and Sparkles against Top Cac and North Chilean G. Now it's going to be on Siberian Divide. The options being Aurelian Siberian Divide and another map who I can't remember right now. But probably not important. Insular Encounter. <laughs> I apologize to whoever made Insular Encounter. That that was kind of rude. But yeah, so those three were the options. Aurelian was banned and Siberian Divide was picked. So, players setting up that Siberian Divide, not a map we've seen very often. It's, I mean, an icy map, obviously, but it's a map we haven't seen all that much just because, again, I don't cast a lot of TV2, but I don't think it's even that common in these games. I don't think it's in the ladder. A lot of, obviously, a lot of games that are being done, especially the ones that I cast, are ladder games. So, if the map isn't a featured map in the ladder, then it isn't an option. I think a lot of the maps being used in this tournament are not normal featured maps, just to provide that bit of variety. But yeah, this isn't a map I've seen very often. It's one of those maps that's surprisingly bot viable because of the way that the pathing works. I think this center ridge is the only section that bots can't go on. And everything else, I'm fairly certain, is actually completely within their power. So, yeah, it should actually work out pretty interestingly. I'm curious what people will go for. Interestingly, we haven't actually seen a lot of air. We've seen Dying Front go for air. We saw air last game, but we haven't seen a huge amount of it. Especially in Cold Snap. It didn't come up at all. But... Yeah, this is actually surprising, because the last 2 feature tournament we did, or actually it was a 3v3 tournament, but even the last 2 feature tournament we did, there was quite a bit of air, and it kind of felt like you needed to have some kind of air in order to win, but this tournament, no. This tournament, air has not proven strictly necessary. Which is nice for variety. Although, again, it kind of makes sense with the smaller maps. Like, Cold Snap isn't that big, and it's kind of spread out. But, anyway. This map being a bit more linear and a bit, a bit larger... It's obviously going to be much. It's obviously going to be much easier to make air useful. Yeah. So Sparkles going for Cloaky, Dime Friend, and Top Gag both going for air, and North Chilling G going for shields. Like I said, this map is for its size surprisingly bot friendly. But again, also unsurprisingly, we are seeing a lot of air. So, like I said, I was surprised round one we didn't see much air, but I'm not surprised we're seeing it now. This is kind of normal. This point, though, all players have scattered everyone out, or at least, I should say, the Southeast team has sc scattered out Mumble Clan. Mumble Clan, they are still, I think, in the dark. Yeah, it looks like they haven't gotten their Swift over to the other side. So, at this point, Mumble Clan, they're operating without the proper knowledge, but the Dirtbag should be able to get in and see what's going on quickly enough. The real question is, what is Sparkles playing? The answer, of course, is Cloaky, which we know, and they don't. Because don't try to stream snipe, I have put on a delay. I remember to put on the delay. Which I usually do after like round one or two. But I remembered before the tournament even started. So yeah, don't even try to do stream sniping. There is too much of a delay for it to be worth it. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, it's no big deal because the game is over. Anyway, Sparkles has been exposed. They do have their Cloakybot factory revealed for all the world to see. And Mumble Clan, I'm not sure how they're going to respond to that, because quite frankly, seeing Cloaky Bot isn't going to change all that much. Like, you, you build to deal with riot raiders, you build riot units, you don't really need to think too hard about, oh, what are they doing? It's just glaives. I mean, hell, the fact that glaives are spotted already kind of revealed that, so... Yeah, this is this is kind of a typical matchup. Shield versus Cloaky, there's nothing super unusual about it. So it's not like it's going to be a situation where you have to think, like, I guess spiders or jump bots where you'd be thinking, oh, crap, i got to deal with somewhat awkward units or got to make more skirmishers or got to consider the possibility of pyros jumping into my base. Like, no, it's just... You just fight normally. At this point, fighting normally, including raiding, getting a bit of damage done, but unfortunately, that bandit not able to do all that much. Overall, there hasn't really been successful raiding at all. No workers have died, no... Metal Extracts have died. This bandit was heavily damaged and got repaired, because why not? I mean, both teams are poking at each other, and neither team is finding any value. I mean, a few hundred metal here and there at two and a half minutes into the game is not terribly low, but it is still kind of low. Like, I would expect one or two Metal Extracts to have gone down by now, but no, both teams doing a fine job defending, doing a fine job making sure that they're not losing too much in the process of attacking. 
So overall, pretty good. But now Swiss coming in here should start actually possibly getting rid of this Raptor on the ground. Air superiority, however, should be ooh, very, very, very rarely in favor of Southeast. I mean, if this Raptor gets built up, then it will shift kind of towards the Mumble Clan. But overall, the air superiority is largely just being used as a way of keeping things more or less in check. The Raptor is probably going to be fine. Those Swifts, ah, if one more missile had fired off the Swifts, that Raptor would have been dead. But unfortunately, it was not spotted, didn't get microed around, so yeah, it didn't work. But at any rate, Gremlins coming in here should be at least a bit of a threat. I mean, at, like I said, at this point, because air is known, anti-air is being built. And how many Swifts are available? So we have eight Swifts coming in for a Southeast team. Northwest team, they have six Swifts and a Raptor. I still think Northwest team is going to, or the Bumble Clan, is going to be able to win just that little bit on air. But clearly, that's not the fight here. The fight is use the Swifts to harass out everything else. Take out Thugs, take out Metal Extractors, possibly take out Scythes, or the Scythe. Well, yeah, actually, yes, possibly take out sides. That's more what the Mumble Clan is trying to do here. But hey, the Scythe able to get rid of a Metal Extractor. A successful Metal Extractor kill. How about that? Getting rid of a Metal Extractor. Another Glaive coming in here. Getting rid of a Convict. That is huge, actually. That's that's what I wanted to see. Kill some Convicts. As I always say, that's the most vulnerable part of your opponent's base, or opponent's overall production, overall military, whatever, is the Engineers. If you take that out, it's going to be a minute or so before they're able to rebuild whatever Metal Extractors that Engineer was working on. At least. So now, real value has been found by both teams as far as harassment, particularly by the Northeast team. I think, sorry, the Southeast team. The Mumble Clan has not found all that much, to be fair. They've gotten a fair amount of defense, and have managed to hold their own reasonably well, but the Southeast team's harassment has actually found quite a bit of value. I mean, Mumble Clan behind by 15 metal per second, not even counting Overdrive or Reclaim, just base metal, 15 metal per second. The Southeast team should have enough... Oh, should barely have energy. The problem is they don't have the production value. They don't have any caretakers coming in. So Southeast, unfortunately, about to excess, and that does mean Mumble Clan isn't that far behind when you really think about it. Because Mumble Clan, I mean, they have 35 metal per second going into their factories. They are not going to excess anytime soon. Where Southeast team, they need workers, they need caretakers. They are getting neither. I mean, they have a conjurer coming down here, but it's it's queued to build up more metal, more power plants in a really awkward. Oh, because of the river. That's why. I was like, what are you doing? Why, why aren't you taking a direct path? Uh, that's why. Okay. And that Conjure's probably going to die, too, because there's an outlaw right there. But yeah, unfortunately, the Southeast team is accessing a little bit. I think they're... Are they upgrading the commanders? I don't know. Spark no, neither of them is upgrading the commanders. They're just building as much as they can to try to deal with the excess, or try to stop the excess before it happens. Yeah, that's... Mostly prevented. Not bad. But again, the problem was production advantage. Mumble Clan still had a production advantage for about a minute and a half, and that is going to be huge. I mean, it's going to come down to how well they're able to deal with the Swifts. And at this point, no real anti air has been built, but it may not matter. The bandits are not being phased by the Swifts. It should be able to take out most of the metal extractors over to the north side of the map. And the Thunderbirds at least coming in to try to defend against a center assault. But the center isn't really where things are under fire. It's the north side, which Japan is able to get rid of two metal extractors. Unfortunately, not all that much value when you think about it. It's still 43 to 31 for metal. A lot of it actually being taken in the center. That center has been quite thoroughly cleaned by Sparkles. And thanks to the Thunderbird, there was no easy way for the Mumble Clan to get in and actually start dealing with it. So right now, we are seeing Mumble Clan just on the back foot. Southeast team again with a bit of a production problem, but now they've got the caretakers up. It's a lot easier to solve that. And again, they have plenty of energy, so really, I like the way Southeast economy is being built up. It's just the production, that's not been quite so efficient. But I mean, one more caretaker, and there it is. And that should be it. That's 50 metal per second. I would I would recommend yet another caretaker just to be on the safe side for reclaim or further expansions. But definitely one more caretaker will be able to take care of all the metal that's being used so far. And there it is. So at this point, Southeast team... They didn't really access too much. Now they have their production completely on. It's completely online. Everything's working. All they need to do is get rid of all the stuff destroying the air control. Because right now the air control has been completely wiped out. And these raptors are to blame. Get rid of the raptors. You'll be okay. Get rid of this incoming force. You'll probably be okay. Well, the Conjurer at least is up over the north and able to reclaim and rebuild. So there is that. That is handy. And, wow, okay, imps I would not recommend. Not when you're dealing with outlaws. That is risky. I 
I don't know. If the Imp is in the right spot, it might be able to at least not destroy its own team. But, sheesh, that's going to be tough. And at the same time, we're seeing a lot of the center being seeded. I mean, the Raiders are coming in, tearing apart as much as they can, or at least damaging the Raptors as much as they can, taking a couple out of the sky. But the problem, of course, is this Owl. I mean, the Owls here try to make sure that, obviously, oops, obviously the Southeast team can see as much as they can. See as much as they want, really. I'm a bit surprised Sparkles hasn't just set up radar on the tower, though, like on this plateau. Just set up radar or something. The, I mean, the owl's great, but it's gonna die. Or at least it's this massive target. Same time, though, forces are being pushed away. Dying Fernie coming in here with a couple of, of Phoenixes, able to wipe out basically everything. And with that, Momo Clan's assault has been completely pushed off. Now all the forces can move back to the Western Front, and that should be enough to wipe out everything here. Dying Freund able to hold off with some tanks. But the main story here is all the forces from Sparkles coming over west and should be able to wipe out basically everything North Chilean G has just by sheer numbers. All at the same time, Raven's coming around the back. Five Ravens coming around the back with no real defenses, no real air control, and a commander that's nice and vulnerable. There is, however, a set of crashers that will be nice to use. They'll be very helpful. And also the Phoenix is coming in, able to break up some of the forces from North Chilean G, force them to retreat. Of course, the question is, what are these Ravens going to be able to do? And the answer is still going to be take out Dying Friends Commander in the air, too! Dying Friends Commander blowing up right next to the Ravens, taking out two of them with his death explosion, but it still goes down. I didn't... I don't think I've ever seen a Recon Commander die while jumping, but apparently that's a thing. Apparently you can do that. But Dying Friend losing that commander, and really, though... It's that big of a problem. Southeast team still has a massive, massive advantage when it comes to economy. 20 metal per second. They are using all of that metal. They are no longer accessing. There is still all the production available. There's still plenty of territory that's effectively theirs as soon as they decide to take it. And their army on the front line is putting enough pressure onto North Chilean G that I don't think this is going to end well for the Mumble Clan team. I mean, it might be fine. That was a really nice rogue shot there, taking out three Ronin for very little in return. But again, these outlaws are pretty much just going to burn to death. Not the nicest way to go, but I mean, you got to die somehow. So I guess being burnt to death is an option. Would not recommend, but you know, you can. And actually, the outlaws do survive just barely in one case. Send that phoenix back in there, set them on fire again. You know, that's how it goes. However, the frontline army is being held back. Clearly, Sparkles is trying to make sure that they have a large enough army to be able to actually punch through North Chilean G's forces. And I agree with that sentiment. Especially given that the Southeast team is at such a huge advantage. Don't overdo it. Like, don't throw that away. But the Thunderbird coming in... Oh, wait, no. The Thunderbird is... Ah, coming in the back lines. Helping defend a little bit against some of the harassment coming in from Sparkles on the back. But nothing following up. Not even the Swifts coming in to really deal much damage to the Glaives. So these Glaives essentially have nothing to worry about. Topcac able to get that Stardust up in time. But the Glaives don't care. They can still wipe out more Metal Extractors. Mumble Clan is still way behind when it comes to economy production. And essentially, this is just a last stand from North Chilean G. There is not much left. Although, that Snitch was actually there. Did some damage, but really not even enough. Not enough for me to actually even worry about it. About the fact that I missed it. Same time, North Chilean G's army completely on fire. Everything coming in here, wiping out all the production, and that is it. Topcac throwing the towel, North Chilean G and Topcac losing again. Dying Freund and Sparkles continuing undefeated in this tournament into round three. Check the standings right now. Like, it is not pretty. Oh, it's actually not completely updated yet. Okay, never mind. Back to the game. Actually, back to the standings. I need to change which game is being played. But yeah, that is... That is rough. That is really rough. I mean, it's just... The Southeast team just had so much metal. That's so much more going for them. And the Northeast... The Mumble Clan did have a reasonably good army. The Thunderbirds are doing a fine job. It just kept getting lost. The backyard raiding didn't quite work out. So I think... Yeah, Southeast, once they got their economy going, nothing was really stopping them. And then once they got the center, nothing could really stop them. Let's see, the next game... Do we have any others in this? Because that wasn't too long. I could see... No, apparently round three is also done. And as far as round three went... Oh, round three is almost done. 
Not sure. It looks like there was a match on Aurelion. That I realize it's going to take a little while to get. Yeah, let's just check it out. It's Jasper and Flores against Malric and Pet Turtle. So they picked Aurelian. Of course, the first two, or the other two, were being played on Siberian Divide. I wonder if Aurelian was banned in the first case, too. Or the, the other case, the other game, because the game we watched. D Sparkles banned Aurelian. Sparkles specifically banned Aurelian. But anyway, in this match, in the massive fast forward, and why is it blue? Okay, something's weird. Anyway, the okay, as I was saying, with we are on Aurelian C map, and we are seeing what looks like. Gunship ship versus hovercraft ship. And right off the bat, east side, I'm actually able to take out most of the stuff. Flores and Jasper able to hold on reasonably well. Both teams expanding quite quickly, although it looks like the western side expanded again far more quickly into this high value expansions. Our found the metal extractors over the side, while the eastern team did not. Not quite sure it was the logic behind that, but apparently that was how things went. And Flores ah, losing their commander quite quickly to a early assault coming from the Claymores. But at this point, they're actually still not doing too badly. Once these expansions are built up and properly overdrived. Although I say that as Revenant comes in here to take them out, and at the same time, loads of forces from Pet Turtle just tearing apart all the power. And I don't see any easy out of this. Trying to use Lance to stop this, but unfortunately, all those subs just not being countered. Fortunately, they are being countered by Urchins and Claymores. But even then, the Eastern side is going to be relying entirely on Reclaim. 10 minutes into the match. As yet another assault comes in from the western side, and this should be it. This should be death. I don't see any other way of getting out of here. And with that, I think we are going to be seeing a very quick and very final exit coming in for the eastern side. They are doing what they can to reclaim, though, and that is actually helping them out. I keep thinking they're going to go down, and these this giant force of of shredders... Is, or not shredders. What am I saying? This ant here. Giant force of Corsairs coming in here and doing a lot of damage, mostly taking out a lot of the metal extractors that should by rights be for the eastern side. But again, the reclaim is here, but the reclaim is done, and unfortunately without that reclaim, there's no easy way for the eastern side to take in any more forces into their army. And with that, hovercraft production is going to be completely destroyed. That lance has gone down before it could even look at anything, and that is going to be game. Very rapidly going to be game, as really that... I can't pause this. Okay. But yeah, that is, that is it. Very quick, decisive victory from the Western side. Oh, not quick. It's 15 minute victory, but reasonably quick victory from the Western side. They took the early expansions over to the North. They had gunships, which we I mean, obviously have to split anti and anti-ground when that happens. And I'm not really sure how well Hovercraft really works in this map. I kind of agree with some of the assessments that Hovercraft does not have a really easy time on this map. But anyway, that is it for round three. Have been completed. Anakin and Hokumoko also lost to 400 and Manu 12. That was the match we did not get a chance to watch. So overall, that leaves the standings with Dime Throwing Sparkles and 400 and Manu both being undefeated. And everyone else having at least two losses to their record. With Jasper and Flores yet to win a match. So anyway, we'll be moving on to round four very shortly, as that's being set up right now. So stay tuned, as that will be quite interesting. I mean, we had an interesting tournament so far, quite quick, but still fun. So stay tuned, we'll be back in a couple minutes.